Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on CSS interview questions at Simply Learn. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, which is the foundation of web design and development. Basically, it allows developers to separate the HTML from the presentation, meaning design and layout of web pages, making websites more visually appealing and easier to manage. So in today's tutorial, we have curated top question, which will help you clear the interviews. Now here's the agenda of our today's session. First, we are going to start with beginner level question. Then we are going to discuss intermediate level questions. And finally, we are going to deep dive into advanced level questions. Now, before we move on, just a quick info guys, Simply Learn has got full stack Java developers master program. You can master Java with our Java full stack developer course. You can become job ready with this course. Here you are going to master front end frameworks like React and Angular. Also, you're going to learn about backend technology such as Java, Spring, and also about DevOps and cloud deployment. You're going to build real world applications with industry relevant projects that will really help you in your career. So guys, hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. Now, before we move ahead, here's a short quiz to test your knowledge. What does the CSS property Z index do? Your options are controls the size of element, determines the stacking order of elements or adjust the font size or sets the position of element. So guys, mention your answers in the comment section below. And also guys, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon such that you don't miss out any update from our end. So let's get started. So guys, let us start with the beginner's level question. So the first question is, what does CSS stand for and why it is used? So guys, the answer for the same is CSS stands for cascading style sheets and it is used to style and design web pages by controlling layout, colors, fonts, spacing and other visual representations. Now, here is our next question. How do you link a CSS file into HTML document? And the answer for the same is you can link an external CSS file using the link tag inside your head section of your HTML for example, like link, relative sheet, href, style.css. So this is your CSS file. I hope so. You would have got a brief idea regarding this. Now let us move ahead with the next question. And the question is, what are the three ways to apply CSS? This is a pretty interesting question. And the answer for the same is CSS can be applied in three ways. First of all, it's inline. Basically, you're writing your CSS inside an element. Then this internal where you are writing the CSS under the style tag and finally external CSS where you are creating an additional CSS file. Now let us move ahead with the next question. What is the difference between class and ID selectors in CSS? So guys, a class selector is a reusable and can style multiple elements while ID selector is unique and should be used only once a page for a specific element. So you can see, so class across the element, we use dot and ID is unique. So we use hash all over here. Now let's move ahead with the next question. Next question is explain the syntax rule of CSS. So the basic CSS rule includes selector and a declaration block, like something like this. So you will have property and your given value. For example, let's say you want to style a given paragraph. So under the P tag, you can just write property. Let's say property can be color and the value can put it up as blue. Now let us move ahead with the next question. The next question is what are CSS pseudo classes? And the answer for the same is pseudo classes define special states of elements such as hover, focus, and also for example, like first child or NS child. Basically they enhance interactivity without JavaScript. So that's a pretty interesting question. Now let's move ahead to the next question. And the next question is, how do you change the background color of a web page using CSS? So guys, the answer for the same is, you can change the background color using this rule. Under the body tag, write background color. And let's say for example, you want to keep your background color as light blue. So this is going to apply the color to the entire web page. Now let us move ahead to the next question. How do you horizontally center a div in CSS? So guys, you can center a block element using margin. For example, you can give margin auto, but defined width or by using flexbox 
something like this like let's say display flex and justify content center now let us move ahead to the next question what is the use of z index property in css pretty interesting question so guys the z index controls the stacking order of positioned elements so elements with a higher z index appear above those with the value lower now let us move ahead to the next question what is the difference between inline internal and external css so we had discussed this pretty much earlier so the difference between all of them is like if we talk about inline so inline styles are written where you are writing your css inside an element whereas internal css you write your css configuration under the style tag and if we talk about external css you basically create a file let's say style.css and you write your css properties all over there i hope so you would have got a brief idea regarding this now let's move on to the intermediate level questions so guys our next question is what are relative and absolute units in css for example like px em rem and percentile so the answer for the same is if we talk about absolute units like px they have size that do not change based on the screen or based on the parent elements but if we talk about relative units let's say for example em rem modulo or vw or vh so they scale depending on various factor maybe it it could be the parent's font size height width so they can be multiple factor now let's move ahead to the next question so guys our next question is what is the difference between inline inline block and block elements in css so guys answer for the same is inline elements do not start on a new line and they take up only as much width as necessary for example you can think about span whereas if i talk about block elements they take up the full width available pushing the elements beneath them for example like div and if i talk about inline block elements they behave like inline elements but can have block like properties such as width and height for example you can think about image tag our next question is how does flexbox works and what are its key properties so guys flexbox is one dimensional layout system that allows you to basically align and distribute space among items in a container so key properties could include like display you can keep it as flex for the container justify content align items and flex direction so these are the given properties you can use for alignment i hope so you would have got a brief idea regarding this now let us move ahead and our next question is how do you make a responsive layout in css so this is a pretty interesting question and the answer for the same is a responsive layout adapts to different screen sizes using media queries so you can use flexible units like what we have discussed viewport vh and flexbox grid for example like media screen you can keep it as max width let's say the pixel size could be 600 pixels and in the container you can keep the flex directions as column so this is going to change the layout on the smaller screens also so this is how you make the responsiveness now let us move ahead with the next question so our next question is what is the difference between ns child and nth of type selectors in css so if i talk about ns child it targets elements based on their positions in the parent regardless of the type whereas nth of type targets element of a specific type for example div of nf type let's say 2 so this is going to select the second div whereas div nth child 2 is going to select the second child element of any type so that was the major differences now let us move ahead to the next question so guys our next question is what are css variables and how do you define or use them so basically css variables are used to store the values you want to create one variable let's say main color and you want to give the value as blue now you can use this variable throughout your css program and it is going to be applying the color as blue and for example you can also define color var main color so this is how the syntax is for defining the css variable so guys our next question is how do you use calc function in css and the answer for the same is calc is basically used for dynamic calculations in css 
it allows you to combine different units. For example, width. So you can use Calci 100%, let's say it's 50 pixels. Now, what it is going to do is, it is going to adjust based on the viewport size minus a fixed value. So that's how it's going to calculate. Now, let us move ahead with the next question. Now, let us discuss advanced level CSS questions. So our first question is, how does the contain property improve performance in CSS rendering? Now guys, please pause this video and think about the answer for this given question. So guys, answer for the same is, the contain property tells the browser actually to limit the scope of rendering for an element. So it improves performance by reducing unnecessary reflow and repaint operation. So this is actually is useful in large and complex layout. Now let us discuss about our next question. So our next question is, how CSS inheritance and cascade order work internally? Pretty interesting question. And the answer for the same is, inheritance basically allows child elements to inherit styles from their parents like font properties, whereas cascade determines which rule is applied and when multiple rules affect the same element based on specificity, source order, or it could be importance. So this is how Cascade actually works internally. Now guys, our next question is, how do you create complex animations using keyframe? And the answer for the same is, keyframe actually defines the stages of animation. For example, you can type keyframes, example, you can transform or translate, and then you can transform or translate by putting up the given values. Let's say it could be 100. So in this way, you can create complex animations using keyframes. Now let us move ahead to the next question. And our next question is, what is composting and painting in browser rendering? Now, this is pretty interesting question. And the answer for the same is composting actually involves combining layers of elements in the browser to create the final image. And painting is the process of rendering the styles, for example, color, texture, or elements. Both are critical for performance in complex designs. Now, let us move ahead to the next question. And our next question is, how can you optimize CSS for better performance? And the answer for the same is, to optimize CSS, what you need to do is, you can minify and combine CSS files to reduce the file size. Also, avoid using too many complex selectors. You can also remove unused styles and you can increase the performance by following this. Now, let us move ahead with the next question. The next question is, how does the will change property help with animations? And the answer is, the will change property tells the browser which property is likely to change. So it allows it to optimize rendering and avoid lag during animations. Thus, it improves performance. Now let us move ahead with the next question. And our next question is, what are the logical properties in the CSS? For example, like margin inline start. And the answer for the same is, logical properties adapt to the text direction, LTR or RTL. For example, margin inline start adjusts the margin at the start of the line. So whether it's left or right, it depends upon the language and direction. So this is how we do it. Now let us move ahead to the next question. Now our next question is a pretty interesting question and it says, how can you implement dark mode using CSM custom properties? So guys, answer for the same is, you can implement dark mode using media queries for prefers color scheme and CSS custom properties like media prefers color scheme, let's say dark, and then you can put, for example, all over here. And in, in this way, you can actually override these variables with darker values. And in your UI, you are going to see a dark theme. Now, let us move ahead with the next question. And our next question is, what is the difference between hardware acceleration and software rendering in CSS transition? Now, pretty interesting question, guys. So, if I talk about hardware acceleration, so it uses a GPU to handle intensive graphical task while uh, resulting in smoother animation. Whereas if I talk about software rendering, it uses a CPU which can be slower and less efficient for complex animations. Now, let us discuss our final question. So guys, our final question is, 
how does some grid work in CSS and grid level two? And the answer for the same is some grid allows child grid to align its item with parent grid. And also it provides a more flexible and consistent layout without manually defining the grid for each child. So this is how your subgrid work in CSS. So guys, these were some of the top questions which you should be aware about while applying for the front-end dev role. I hope so guys, you would have enjoyed our today's video. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial on top CSS interview question. And also guys, if you like these kind of videos, then do hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell icon. Thank you guys for watching this video.